Hi everyone, today we're doing a lifting thread treatment for this patient. We are going in with Arte 118 gauge threads for her. So as I'm marking up, I have the patient sit up straight. I really like to appreciate gravity taking effect on the tissue. And as you can see, I just kind of pull the tissue. Um, I kind of was pinching down by the marionette lines, really just trying to evaluate the tissue as best as possible and see where we're going to get the best lift. So down there, I'm kind of pinching just that little bit of jowl tissue. She does not have, you know, jowling yet, but this is where she will eventually have jowling as, you know, the aging process continues. Here, I'm just feeling for my antagonial notch. With lifting threads, there is no risk of vascular occlusion, but I do like to avoid the antagonial notch area just due to the facial artery. Um, you know, worst case scenario, the patient gets a hematoma, but of course, we are trying to avoid that if possible. So. Just marking there so I have a visual once the patient is laid back. I'm temporarily marking my jawline vector. Sometimes I end up changing this um, just depending on the lift that I get initially from my um, pilot hole over the zygoma, but we will go ahead and see once we start treating. So for her, we're doing some neck threads as well. So again, I just kind of manipulate the tissue. I kind of see where I'm going to get the best pull. I'm just kind of pinching, seeing what laxity she has and where, you know, what placement I think is going to be best. I did end up changing this. I went a little bit more forward here um, because I just felt like I was getting a better lift once she was laying back. So, you know, these markings are just a guide. They're not set in stone. We're not married to our markings. Um, I just kind of go and evaluate the lift as I see it happening. So starting off here, I'm going in with some Lido with Epi and just making my initial pilot hole. I like using Epi at that insertion site. It just helps control bleeding a little bit. So now I'm going in with my 18 gauge pilot hole. Like I said, we are using an 18 gauge um, cannula today. So I'm going to make sure we can get in there as smoothly as possible. And as you can see, once I insert my needle, I tent up a bit and just kind of see if I like my depth. This is going to be the most important step of placing threads. If you start that initial vector too superficial or too deep, that is the plane that your thread is going to try to follow. So it's important to make sure that you like your depth right off the bat. Now we're going in with a cannula, just placing a little bit of lidocaine. I have my lido buffered here with some sodium bicarb just to take off that burn but I just do a little splash. Um, 0.5 is typically my max that I'll do in a vector. Of course, if my patient's uncomfortable, I will do a little bit more, but I want to prevent that thread from floating in all of this fluid with inside the vector. So I just do a little splash, take the edge off, make sure the patient's comfortable. But other than that, like I said, this treatment is pretty smooth. If you're in that correct plane, the patient really should be in very, you know, should be very comfortable. As you can see, she's not even flinching here. Um, she's had um, Sculptor before, Smooth Reds before, so she's kind of used to these biosimilatory um, treatments here. But now we are going in with our last vector. And as you can see, I backed up a little bit. I felt that I was too superficial. And I want to make sure that as we're prepping here, before we're placing those threads, that I love my depth, that I know that that's where I want my thread to be placed. With this cannula, we can back up and move around. Um, and like I said, my patient is pretty comfortable here. So this is really want to make sure I, you know, achieve per perfection with that vector. Once we have that thread, it's a lot harder to back up. So like I said, you just want to set yourself up for success. So here we're going in with our first thread. Like I said, this is Vsoft Lift and Arte 1 18 gauge thread. And as you can see, that slid beautifully right down into my vector. For this patient, I did decide to go all the way past the area of animation. Um, this is really important, especially in the nasolabial fold area and the marionette area, just due to smiling and facial expressions. We don't want to be able to see that thread. So I either go all the way past or stop slightly in front. But now we're going in with our marionette thread. I kind of shimmy my way down the vector, tent up, make sure I like my depth, make sure I'm going at a very even. Um, depth. We don't want any um, waves in that depth. 
that's when patients can start to notice some puckering. So again, just making sure it's nice and smooth all the way down. Going in with our last vector here, this one is for the jowl. Again, I have my facial artery marked off. Again, there's no risk of vascular occlusion or anything like that, but we just want to make sure that we're not causing unnecessary bruising and just keeping the end of that cannula away from that area. Once I have my three threads placed here, I do a very gentle pull back and just make sure my barbs are engaged. I'm not yanking and pulling. I'm doing very light pressure. Um, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but we're just making sure those barbs are engaged. We're not trying to pull that thread out. We want that thread to be staying inside the tissue. This is the foreign body that's inside that's stimulating the body to break it down and stimulating that natural um, neocollagenesis. So we want that thread, you know, to remain inside the tissue. And that's what's going to be building our collagen. So just going through and giving a nice smooth, sometimes there's a few barbs that just um, pop into place. I let my patient know that sometimes, especially if the patient swells a lot during the treatment, that they might feel a couple zingers um, post-treatment for the next few days. Now we're going in with our jawline. Same concept. I'm going in with my Lido with sodium bicarb and just going to give a little bit just to take the edge off. Again, this patient, she's amazing. She literally didn't flinch throughout this whole video. I was joking with her that she can come and film all of her videos. Um, she's just such a great patient. Like I said, she's not new to cosmetic treatment, so um, this was very comfortable for her. Going in with our fourth thread for this side, we're going to go all the way past, again, that area of animation. Want to make sure we're reducing the risk of thread um, visibility when that patient is animating. And just going ahead and pulling back, I'm going to do that same thing. Just give it a gentle little tug, make sure everything is engaged and go ahead and cut with sterile, um, sterile scissors. I like to go over the area just with an alcohol wipe, get her cleaned up, and then I place a band-aid. I have the patient leave these band-aids on um, for the rest of the day until they, you know, are at home and done with their work day, things like that, um, just to keep the initial site really clean, and then they can take it off that night. Going in with our neck threads, we're going to be doing the same thing. Once you get the hang of threads, they are very easy. It just takes some time just getting used to the feeling. Um, so once you kind of have the use of a cannula down, they're very simple to place. Um, as you can see in the neck, it looks like I'm a little bit more superficial. She has very thin tissue, um, but I'm still happy with this placement. Um, I know we're not going to be able to see the thread. It just, obviously, this tissue is a lot thinner um, than the tissue in her face. But cannula use, I, if you're going ahead and taking courses, um, this is a great way to get an introduction to cannula use if you're not already using cannula for filler. Um, this is a very cannula-heavy treatment. So if you are looking to get more comfortable with cannulas um, in your aesthetic practice, doing threads is a great way to do that. But here we're going in with our threads. Again, I'm using 18 gauge and just following that same process. In the neck, it's a little bit more tricky because we're going um, at a bit of a different angle um, and the depth is a little bit different. So I definitely recommend getting comfortable in the face first um, prior to going and doing neck threads, but it is very similar, um, very similar treatment planning. Going in with our last thread here, like I said, this patient, she's amazing. Um, even in the neck, she is very comfortable here. Um, and of course, if my patient is a little bit more sensitive, of course, I'll go in and give them a little bit more numbing. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we want to prevent that thread from floating around. But if the patient is uncomfortable, you know, that comes first. So of course, we're going to go ahead and numb them a little bit more. Here, I just didn't like the end of my thread. I felt like I was just a little bit too superficial. Um, so I went ahead and put a 3cc syringe on the back of my, um, my thread there just to trap it in so it doesn't engage. Like I said, you cannot pull back if you don't have anything trapping that thread. But once I was happy with it, we went ahead and removed. Same concept, we're going to cut those threads, throw on our Band-Aid, and we will see this patient back in about three weeks for her follow-up.